Squeeze La Familia, man. We back again. Story of True Bleeder. Like this video. Leave a comment. Hope y'all enjoying all the um, videos that I'm dropping. Um, the 24. Like, comment, subscribe. And y'all yeah, know the rest, man. Light up. Spark up. Watch the video. But before he can make it out, the wild streets of Baton Rouge caught up to him, and he was tragically killed in February 2022. His death was a major blow to the Baton Rouge rap scene. But most people don't know just how crazy the situation was. So today, we're breaking down the story of True Bleeder and the war in Baton Rouge. True Bleeder came up on the north side of Baton Rouge. Not much is known about his early life, but we know he had a wild come up in the streets. He was always getting in trouble as a kid, and he actually went to six different middle school. Yeah, they be pulled up. Oh my goodness, pulled up. <laughs> we decided to drop out in sixth grade at 15 years old. True Bleeder was always interested in music, started rapping. Why was he 15 in the sixth grade? <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> the bachelor dude. I was like in ninth grade, fifteen or some shit. So the brothers, Kimon and Cole Bleeder, when he was just eight years old. But when True Bleeder was ten, his brother Kimon was tragically shot and killed at a birthday party. It all started with a beef between the crew and Acres fam and a rap group and jungle music. It's not clear why they had issues, but it ended up with three teens losing their lives. In March 2014, Jungle Music was hosting a birthday party and concert in a town close to Baton Rouge called Baker. A 16-year-old named Scrappy. Yeah, I did some True Bleeder before. It wasn't this one, because this one just came out. But I remember hearing about they came through the party and aired it out. Crazy. Young boy. This fam had an issue with a dude affiliated with Jungle Music and Javon Simmons. Nobody knows what the beef was all about, but Scrappy walked into the party and aired it out. He shot Simmons first, and everyone started running. Scrappy kept shooting, and by the time it was over, three bystanders were dead, including True Bleeder's brother, Kimon. Scrappy got hit with second degree murder charges, but he ended up pleading guilty to three counts of manslaughter instead. During the sentencing hearing, Scrappy said, Everything happened so fast. I took three lives, and I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. The judge gave him 40 years in prison, but the families of his victims didn't think it was enough. An 18 year old named DeAndre Claiborne was killed during the shooting, and his mother told Scrappy, I'm not sympathetic by no means. I'm a God fearing woman. I don't think 40 years is enough for taking away a lifetime. Kimon's death had a massive impact on. Damn. Homie ain't gonna never get out. Well, 40 years, that dude, whole family will be dead. He ain't got no board. If he got 40 flat, did he get out? He's a kid, he gonna be dead there at 60, 50 something. Sheesh. Imagine going there at 16, 17, and ain't getting out till you 50. Damn. He's only 10 years old. That's some nigga's reality. Thanks. Damn. It went down, but he later started the Bleeders with his brother Cole Bleeder, and this is when the situation in Baton Rouge started getting messy. The Bleeders are linked up with sets like the 5400 Boys, 300, and TBG. Fredo Bang was actually best friends with DeAndre Claiborne, aka Crazy Trey. He was one of the victims during the shooting, where True Bleeder's brother, Kimon, died. TBG is the crew that young boy used to rap before he split up, and that spark a deadly war in the city, and now the beef is crazier than ever. The Bleeders' main ops is a set called the Vultures. They have rappers in their crew like YKWIHF Cobb and YKWIHF Bay, who used to be tied with True Bleeder's brother, Kimon, before all the drama started. They're linked up with sets like Six to Crew, which is also why Young Boy's 4K Trey Camp rocks with that side. Young Boy's little brother, B Way Young, he Six to Crew, which makes the Bleeders Young Boy's ops too. Young Boy's homie Ben 10 has major issues with them, and the Bleeders allegedly killed a couple of his family members. A lot of the dudes from both sides are cool back in the day. Yeah, they stepping. I remember them niggas was arguing on Clubhouse. I saw that shit on YouTube, and I was like, damn. The next thing you know, little dude's dead. I said, it's not clear how the beef started, but in 2020, the streets of Baton Rouge started getting more violent than ever. YKW IHF Kai was allegedly caught hooking up with the baby mama of a rapper and BME Peasy. Kai allegedly killed him and got booked for the murder. Yeah. The charges Niggas killed him fucking around, bro. Nigga, that's a, that's a touchy subject. Niggas fucking with a nigga baby mom. That shit get touchy. Nigga gonna come try you about that baby mom. Bro, due to lack of evidence. According to his family, Kai started trying to turn his life around and was focused on his newborn daughter. But last year, he was shot and killed outside of a Holiday Inn. Yeah. Kai and his fiance were sitting in the car in the parking lot when somebody started letting off shots in broad daylight. His fiance survived the shooting. Yeah. Unfortunately, Kyle was pronounced dead at the scene. It's not clear who was behind the head. Rumors say 
Gladys might have been involved. Then just three days later, Ben Tan's homie Mugatti was shot and killed outside of his house. Losing someone like that is already bad enough. See, yeah, this was another what I did before. They telling the real story of the bleeders. They was bleeding shit. But two days after Mugatti died, Ben Tan took another loss. His cousin was shot and killed right in front of him. Ben Tan and his cousin Jug were driving down to 110 near a town called Prairieville, Louisiana. Somebody pulled up on them and started letting off shots. The police found their truck in the middle of the road with Jug dead behind the wheel and Ben Tan sitting next to him. The vultures had lost three homies back to them. niggas called Ben Tan like it too? I ain't never know about none of that. That's crazy. I ain't, well, I ain't from out there. I ain't know nothing about the bleeders. I'm not gonna lie. I ain't no, never heard a true bleeder until that clubhouse shit with Ben Ted. I mean, he ain't really reached my. He ain't reached me yet. He ain't get a chance to reach me. And it's fucking sad that he's reaching me now as he's dead. Like, I finally find out who he is. And I'm gonna tap in with his music just to check it out. I really don't even like listening to dead people. Because it'd be like, oh man. I might start liking this little nigga and I ain't gonna get no more music. It's crazy. And at the same time, True Bleeder was starting to pop off on the music side. He started uploading tracks to YouTube in 2020. But last year, he started popping off with tracks like Play For Keeps, Trouble Soul, Check My Jacket. It looked like True Bleeder was gonna be the next rapper out of Baton Rouge to take it far in the game. But then in February, he was murdered in a drive-by outside of the mall of Louisiana. On February 25th, True Bleeder, Co Bleeder, and two of their homies was at the mall together. Baton Rouge don't have a lot of places to shop, but there's always a chance you'll run into the ops at a place like the mall. Gold Leader says he knew they was hanging around too long to try to get True to hurry up. But True wasn't worried about the situation, and just took his time. Apparently, somebody got the drop in their location, though, because right when they left... Yeah, he bugging. You can't be in the mall. You gotta go OT when it's lit. When it's lit? Yeah, man, you gotta go OT. You gotta go OT to go shopping. Cause there's a chance you're gonna be in there shopping, even with your family, with your girl, or whoever. So it'll be a chance, nigga, that somebody gonna see you lagging and then they gonna boom you. <laughs> Hold up, start letting off shots. It's not clear exactly how everything went down, but the bleeders shot back while the shooters left their whip and hopped into a getaway car. Unfortunately, True and his homie Clifton Lindsay were both killed in the shooting. A couple months later, a dude named Dubug was arrested for the hit. Do bucks from a set called Bankstown that was tied with shot from the vulture. It looked like True Bleeder's case was gonna get solved quickly, but now he's being held until they can get enough evidence against him to start the trial. After True Bleeder was killed, the ops started dissing him on social media immediately. Ben 10 hopped on live, listening to the last song True Bleeder dropped before his death. Then some vultures clowned him by saying his homies were gonna be wearing funeral clothes. Before he died, one of the dudes True Bleeder worked with all the time was his homie TJ Commons. They had a lot of tracks together, like Preaching, Real Love, and Play for Keeps. But now Commas linking up with the Ops. Young boy previewed a new track where he shouted out Commas and said, I just talked to Commas. What's going on? I got you. Mm. It's not fair how they ended up. Oh. That's what he meant when he said that? Homie different. But linking up with Young Boy could be huge for Commas' career. Moving past the violence, trying to make it in the industry is a great thing. Young boy probably had, uh, young boy, them niggas probably had nothing to do with that though. They was beefing with a few different niggas. So, you know, I mean, fuck it. But I don't know though, bro. You don't switch up on your homies though, bro. Especially when you got dead niggas. When you got dead niggas, you can't switch up and go fuck with the ops. That's crazy. But obviously, not everyone's cool with the situation. Truth be, this cousin Jermaine hop on IG and wrote, a million dollars. My cousin dead. I ain't squashing nothing. <coughs> Thomas can just keep the beef going and just cause more violence or end up dead himself. But instead, he's trying to make it out of the streets and level up. And if more dudes had that mentality, the rap game wouldn't be losing so many talented artists before they even get a chance to grow up. Even Cole Blue doesn't want anything to do with his city. It's not clear how he feels about Thomas' situation, but he's not worried about putting Baton Rouge on his back or anything like that. He says the goal is to get everyone's money up so they leave and never look back. Baton Rouge has always been a wild city, but the last few years have been even crazier. Hopefully, Cole Bleeder keeps grinding in the industry and is able to make it out of the streets. He's already lost two brothers to gun violence, and it would be a tragedy if he went out the same way. Rest in peace to True Bleeder. Rest in peace, True Bleeder, man. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm out of here, Squeeze. Squeezers. You squeeze it.